As we know, we can rarely find closed form solutions for uh, the options when solving the Black Scholes equation. And so the, 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 the very simple cases uh, uh, we, we can find uh, analytical solutions. Otherwise, we'll have to find a, a numerical solution for the partial differential equation. Actually, as Paul Wilmot, which is a well-known researcher and practitioner in quantitative finance, uh, says, in his saying in his words, for example, uh, I would say that I use uh, finite difference methods about uh, finite difference method about uh, uh, 75% of the time, Monte Carlo simulation 20%, and the rest will be explicit formula. Uh, those explicit formula are almost always just the regular Black source formula for course I'll put, but otherwise, most of the cases. The common use is the finite difference method in order to solve the Black Scholes equation. And this is what we are going to the aim of the following uh, 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 items here. Well, the aim will be to find uh, different uh, finite different representations for the Black Scholes equations. And we do know that there are explicit and implicit methods. And it's important to have in mind that the uh, what the, the experience that we have developed on uh, the differences between uh, explicit and implicit methods so that the extra complexity of these implicit methods is outweighed by their superior stability properties. So in order to find these finite different representations, the first thing we, we need to make is we need to define a mesh here. So we have like it's a, uh, or, or equations, are two dimensional equations, the variables we do have its time and here in the i axis we do have the asset. So we have to define a mesh. So we have to discretize here the uh, s axis here and for that it's important to define a minimum s value which is going to be usually zero and the maximum one is going to be is max so you have to define according to considering which is strike price which is going to be your s max in your problem it's true that the black source equations to be solved in general in s ranging from c to infinity but in this case we have to define numerically you need to specify which is going to be your s max in the problem and you're going to make here we have to define a delta x is going to be the step here in the s axis and in order to uh, specify the point, the specific point here on the s-axis is going to be defined by this n-index will be running from 0 to ns, which is ns going to be the number of steps you will have in the s-axis and uh, so according to that the x-maximum is going to be ns, which is the maximum corresponding to this index n times the step on s, times delta s and so this is uh, according to s and another variable we have is uh, time here and uh, time will start from zero and will finish on uh, the maturity time which is the capital t here which is here and as usually uh, the condition we do know which is the payoff at the maturity and you have to go back in order to know what's going to be the value of the option at uh, time zero so that's why we are saying that the black Scholes equation is a backwards uh, equation on time it's important we can usually make a, a time variable change so we go from time t to a new variable tau which is defined with relation between them is defined this way tau is equal t which is the capital t which is the maturity time minus t the variable time so it means that this tau time will start from here and will go in this direction that that is so we're working with this new variable tau here again we have to discretize this uh, time axis here we have to define a time step delta t um, so the number of uh, time steps we are going to consider is going we are going to call it n sub t uh, and this n sub t is going to be the number of time step which actually is going to be uh, delta t which is the time step here is going to be t over n t 
So um, therefore, uh, any specific time here, considering the variable tau, tau g, it's going to be j times delta t, where this j is going to be the index associated to the time, will run from 0 to the maximum one is going to be nt. Uh, so again, any point here in the brick we have defined considering the time and s discretizations, we'll have two indexes, and n and j, and we'll specify the uh, uh, value of the s we have, which is going to be sn, and j will specify the value of time. So considering that, uh, we are going to call um, the, uh, we have to define, the M is going to be defined and calculate the value of the option V at all different points we do have here in the grid, which are defined with these two indexes, N and J. And in order to do that, we have to consider both the payoff, which considering this tau, time variable here is going to be the initial condition associated to this time variable and besides that which, which basically means the payoff means to know knowing what's going to be the value of the option at all the points in this at all the points here and all the points here have the characteristics where this j is equal to zero so all the points are all the n j equals zero. So these are going to be defined uh, are going to be defined by the uh, initial conditions which are is going to be the payoff. And on the other hand we do have the boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions are going to specify which are going to be the values of the options here whenever the s is going to be zero. So for all the times on one hand on the other hand is the values of the options corresponding to the maximum s at any time. So these boundary conditions are going to be specifying for n equal uh, n s and all for any time j. And the same thing, the other boundary conditions will correspond to the values of the options at, at s equals 0, which correspond to index n equals 0 and to uh, uh, and any j time. So these are going to be the boundary conditions that we, did not, we do want to know, that we need to know in order to solve the partial differential equation. And besides that, you, we do have this uh, payoff is going to be the initial condition. And the strategy of the finite different representations that we uh, need to know is that once we know these values here and these side values here, we have to know the so next step, know the values that we can have at all these points here as a first step. So that's applying the uh, finite difference representation that we need to find. The M will have, that's based on the values of this one, applying that once in order to have these ones. Yes, once we have the values of these ones, apply it again in order to have the next ones. So on and so forth, just until we are reaching to the beginning, reaching to this point, so we are able to, to get the values of the uh, option at all the points here, so basically, which are going to define, basically, are going to define the value of the uh, options at the time of the contract. But anyway, it's also interesting to have the values of the options at any point here in the grid so that we can analyze and determine which is going to be the value of the option at any value of the asset at an any time. So you can play with that and so on and so forth. So again, the aim will be, this is our equation, this is the black source equation, but it's important that we are going to change our time variable. So we'll make a time variable change here. So we'll move from this t to this new tau, where both are related in this way. The only thing, the only change is that considering applying the chain rule, the uh, time derivative of b is just minus the tau derivative of b. Just considering that and just substituting this by this one, uh, then we are reaching to this equation, which is the one that we are going to solve numerically considering this new tau variable. Again, we are considering that tau variable 
because this way the payoff will correspond to initial condition to this tau variable. So in the following, we'll find different finite different representations for this equation here.